need my microphone so what's up guys welcome back to the channel today we are talking about ubisoft again people around ubisoft ubisoft in general they continue to step in it and ensure that this upcoming game is nowhere near as successful as it should have been i don't know if it'll flop but i'm telling you right now they're pissing people off left and right because they want to continue to attack the fan base they are floundering their company is in trouble right now with the flops that they've had you know just looking at outlaws that just recently came out and the potential flop of Assassin's Creed, I, mean, I I don't know, but they're floundering. And it is not looking good for them, and they continue to attack the fence. Let's listen to this video by Geeks and Gamers and see what they got to say. And we'll react to our little input in here and there. And yeah, let's go ahead and start the video. Today, we get to talk about Stevie Chazar, the monetization director at Ubisoft. That's right, monetization director. Well, I wonder how Stevie uh, is doing at his job. Oh, look at there, Ubisoft's founders reportedly considering buyout after lagging game sales. Well, I guess you're just not very good at your job, Steve. Yeah, there's been reports that due to outlaws and some of the other flops that they've had and just things going on recently and the potential flop of Assassin's Creed Shadows, the Investors are not happy, and a lot of them are looking at potentially either selling or buying out the company. Uh, I even saw a post where the original owners were looking at trying to potentially take the company private, but I don't think that's going to do anything. I don't know all the details of ins and outs, but I do know there's rumors that is surrounding the company right now, and it is not looking good for them. Are you? But of course, it can't be your fault. It must be those toxic gamers' fault because it's always, always someone always. else's fault. It's never your fault. You can never take responsibility. There's always someone else to blame. Have you noticed that's how everybody is nowadays? You got Disney, Star Wars, Lucasfilm, and any any game company, whether it be Sony with Concord, you have Ubisoft here with Star Wars Outlaws, and then uh, the the drama surrounding Assassin's Creed Shadows. They never take any responsibility at all. It's it's always blame the fans. They will paint the entire fan base that criticizes the game or criticizes the show as racist, as biggest, as transphobes, and they attack everybody. They they take like one or two troll accounts on Twitter that are obviously just trying to stir the the flames, essentially. And they'll they'll say some racist or bigoted shit and they'll take that. And they'll use it to paint everybody that way. And all they're doing is pissing people off and dividing their fan base even more to the point where people don't want your games or people don't even care about your TV shows. It's not a winning strategy. Even though you yourself are admitting that you hate the very audience that you should be catering to. Exactly. And this is what happens within the entire entertainment industry. It's been happening for years. They continue to hire people that not only dislike, it's not that they dislike the audience, they actively despise and hate the very audience that they should be catering to. Oh, that, and I'm they starting to think that they do. Same audience when the audience rejects the garbage that they are pushing out. Exactly. I rarely post on social media, but today I am sad, ashamed, and sad. Just so you know, this is the monetization director at Ubisoft. And this came out when I saw this. I was like, oh my God. Again, again, with the fan blaming, the taking the, the vocal minority. Look, if it was a vocal minority, like you say here in this uh, tweet that he's reading, your company wouldn't be hurting, dude. Or Star Wars, for example, your Acolyte TV show wouldn't have gotten canceled if it's just a vocal minority. The, you know, we gamers, we fans are a lot bigger than you give us credit for. Just because you want to belittle our opinions and the fact that we don't like your stuff, calling us a vocal minority isn't going to change the fact that we are more than just a vocal minority. We are a vocal majority. We are tired of your shit. We are speaking up. And you don't like it. Tough luck. Create better shit. It won't be a problem. The gaming industry is rough at the moment. We all know it. But seeing how gamers react on social <laughs> media, wishing ill fate towards companies and people alike is sad. And not only towards Ubisoft. Why, why should gamers care about the company? 
all gamers one is a, is a good product if your company can't put out a good product we don't care whether you go under or not it is not our job to care about the people who work for your company that's your job make a good product and there won't be no problem um it's not sad it's the reality of the situation you work for a company fans historically have been uh very much supportive of these companies and these games that have been coming out and then they hire weirdos like you that are actively changing the very thing that built the company in the first place and then you lash out at the very audience that helped build the company because you have abandoned that this audience guy. this guy gets and of course he it's understands. the audience's fault every single time exactly even though it is always the buy an ip produce content with an ip change what the ip actually was insert your own agenda of what you think the ip should be then get mad at fans when they don't consume your content because they're mad that you changed the ip that's essentially what's happening that's what's always happening recently with remakes with sequels just i mean it's they cannot help themselves the vocal minority that express themselves on social media i was hurt hurt and ashamed to be a part of this community <laughs> um absolutely pathetic beta mentality i mean this is a soy boy to a t yes. this is insane uh what is more revolting is coming on linkedin and seeing the same comments from people within the industry oh no on top of exposing yourself as clearly a non-decent human being criticizing what they're doing makes you a non-decent human being see these people can't take any criticism they feel like they have a right to do what they want and that their right also extends to the fans and that everybody has to enjoy and like what they do. And I'm sorry, it doesn't. Sure, if they've got the money and the ability, they have every right to produce whatever content in a game, TV show, movie that they want. But there is no right that exists that means, but there is no right that exists that forces your fan base or gamers in this case to like and partake in your content, to buy and play your game. That, that's fucking stupid, dude. You put something out there, people are gonna praise it or they're going to criticize it. If you can't handle the criticism, get the fuck out of here. Stop putting content out there. I mean, it's as simple as that. I put content out on YouTube. If people wanna criticize me, fine. That's, that's their right, I don't, I don't care. The only thing, I do is I do what I do because I enjoy what I do. It's a hobby, not a full-time job. Even if it was, I'd still enjoy it. If people want to critique it, sure, I'm open to critiques. I can always get better. People just want to be assets. Hey, that's, that's fine. I'll block them and move on. I don't care. You guys get so butthurt at every little comment. It's, it's ridiculous nowadays. You are affecting thousands of employees that are already impacted by all of the hate, despite doing their best to deliver incredible experience. Well, obviously they're not, because if they were, then we wouldn't be here right now. We wouldn't be having this conversation. Just, just, just saying. This how can you wish a company to fail simply because they do not cater to you or that product does not please you? Is if a company is not catering to the broad player base that they are supposed to be making content for, that's a problem. If they're catering to a niche market or a niche fan base, that's a problem. You want people to buy your product. So when you constantly divide and constantly insult and push away people by calling them racist and bigots, yes, you're going to fail because you're essentially alienating all those people who are going to buy your product. You want a broad customer base, not a narrow niche one. Beyond me, what? How can you wish a company to fail simply because they do not cater to you? Because as the customer, it is your job to cater to the customer. My God, like, so I'm not supposed to be able to go to a restaurant and when they serve me shitty food, I'm gonna be like, yeah, this is terrible. I'm not supposed to complain. I'm not supposed to say anything. I'm supposed to give my money to that restaurant 
and just eat the crap that they give me, even if it's bad, even if it's undercooked, even if it's out of date. No. I'm supposed to do that because how nope. dare you criticize this company that you're giving your money to? I love his voices. How dare you? Insane idea. How dare insane you, sir? Insane idea. That is only something that activists and people that do not care about the industry are pushing. Yep. Because they cannot take any responsibility whatsoever. A classic case that we've all pointed to is the uh, live action Sonic movie that came out a few yep. years ago. And as soon as that first trailer came out, it was widely panned. Everybody looked that at it and said, awful. What the hell is this? This is not Sonic. This is terrible. And what do they do? They said, hey, we hear you. We really screwed up. We are going to take everything back to the drawing board and listen to the criticism. Now they're going in on their third, fourth movie, whatever it is. Um, yeah, I mean, third movie, I think. Absolutely movie, like yeah. the perfect way to handle it. In any capacity, when you're dealing with fans and passionate fans, you're going to have fans have passionate opinions. Yep. Fan is short for fanatic. Yep. This is how it works. It's how it's always worked, and it's how it's always going to work. You're never you have to be able to parse through the dicks, the assholes on Twitter or whatever platform that these guys are putting, putting up their reviews and critiques and see what they're really saying. You cannot get butt hurt just because someone doesn't like the content or the game or the movie you put out there. You need to listen to your fan base. That's your job because you're making content for your fans. If you don't want to listen to your fan base and just call them, call them names and insult them, then you will fail at your job. You have an obligation to look through the passion that these people may have in their feedback and see the message that they're actually trying to provide to you. If you can't do that, then you need to go do something else. It's as simple as that. Ever going to change the core idea of fandom and at the core is passion people are passionate and they're going to express those passionate opinions and we should always encourage passionate reaction from people that care just because you don't like an individual opinion or a specific narrative that is going on doesn't mean that people are wrong you should listen exactly. to all feedback and take yep. that into consideration when you're trying to make changes not complicated at all passion um, so, and he says, we are all on the same boat. Please, please, please stop spreading hate. We should all uplift each other instead of bringing each other down. Um, Ubisoft sucks. Uh, yep. that's really what it exactly. comes down to. Ubisoft. But as it does too right now too. So it's okay. The company sucks. Uh, and it's only going to continue to get worse. Uh, Stevie Chazard. I think that's how you say it anyway. The monetization director at Ubisoft lashed out at gamers and his fellow developers in the wake of the company postponing Assassin's Creed Shadows and admitting its sales for Star Wars Outlaws were softer than expected. Yeah, I mean, we all knew that this horrible. was going to happen. Um, Buggy as because hell. We saw Star Wars Outlaws for the shit show that it was, um, and it was not very hard to pre predict that, that that was going to happen. If you've been, been paying attention to Ubisoft or to Lucasfilm within the last several years, we knew exactly what Star Wars Outlaws was going to be, and it's why it has completely tanked. Uh, about a week. Not to mention, it's a bounty hunter game. I'm I'm sorry. To me, that's not Star Wars. It's a part of Star Wars. It's, it kind of helps expand their universe to know that characters like that exist. But I don't think it's a big enough draw to really pull the fan base as a whole in. I didn't expect it to excel regardless. I really didn't. I, to me, Star Wars needs, it needs to have some tie into the Sith and, and Jedi. If you don't have some of that in your story... I'm not interested. I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just not. That's me. Week after the press release, Jazard took to, uh, took to LinkedIn, where he lashed out at gamers and his fellow developers, celebrating the demise of Ubisoft. And as I just wrote all of that right there, blah 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 blah. And, it and says, he needs this will likely blocker. be lost on Chazard. Uh, but Ubisoft and many of his site. fellow employees are the ones pushing hate towards their commitment to woke ideology. Despite Ubisoft CEO claiming that the aforementioned uh, press release, I want to reaffirm that we are an entertainment-first company, creating games for the broadest possible audience, and our goal is not to push a specific agenda. Wait, 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 wait. 
I remember hearing about this. I thought about making a video. I didn't. He basically came out and said that they didn't push a specific agenda. Guy, you as a company were out there pushing for like internships of non-binary and women. You excluded men. That's an agenda. That's actually the woke agenda. Your company pushes an agenda. It's not that complicated. The proof is out there. You can't come out here and say that you don't push a specific agenda when you obviously do. Guy, come on. Don't gaslight me. We remain committed to creating games for fans and players uh, that everyone can enjoy. The company's website makes it clear how dedicated uh, to the agenda uh, wokeism it is, though. Yes, and yes, exactly. if you go over their um, website, th th it just shows all of the woke social media, social propaganda, talking points about diversity, inclusion, yep. and representation, and all of that bullshit. It's an and agenda. ultimately, no one cares about these things. All they care about is good stories and good characters. They don't care what color a character is. They don't care who a character is. Okay, just to correct him a little bit, there are people who do care, but those generally are not people who will buy your game or go see your movie or watch your TV show. They do it for virtue's uh, sake on Twitter. They want everybody to see how, how virtuous they are. Those are the only people who truly care. On games journalists too, but th those aren't really people. We, we don't talk about them too much like that, you know. Don't want to make them think they actually have a purpose for existing. Is that sleeps with, they don't care what they identify is. We just want good stories. And if you tell good stories, then it doesn't matter. Exactly. It doesn't matter at all. But when identity politics is at the forefront of what you are creating, everything else is going to suffer because Usually no story that's the should case. be driven by identity politics. None. And when a story is driven by identity politics, there is a very, very high possibility that that story is going to suffer and everything else involved with the process is going to suffer. Just ask Star Wars how that's going for them. We've seen it time and time again. So Ubisoft, again, there's rumors that they're looking to maybe sell. Uh, there's rumors of Tencent that's going to be looking to uh, I, maybe purchase it. I don't know. I think Tencent is like they're a minority owner. They have some stake in the company. I don't know how I feel about Tencent buying, potentially buying this. I don't, I don't want them to. I, I really don't. I, my fear is, you look, there's the government in China seriously restricts what companies can and can't do what they can and can't say what people can and can't do and can and can't say even uh, to an extreme compared to the u.s and i don't know if i want a large gaming company like this to be in the hands of essentially the ccp I don't really give a shit what happens to Ubisoft. It doesn't matter to me. Um, they are a ticking time bomb, and they have been for a while now. And what's going to happen with they Assassin's, Assassin's Creed Shadows themselves. is really going to put them in a really bad situation because that is their... And what's crazy is that game was such a layup. Such a layup. It was so easy to get that right. But they didn't. They couldn't flagship franchise and they have completely screwed this entire situation up with pandering to social justice propaganda yep. which again generally speaking no one is interested in at all and it's always a failing business model every single time but hey uh you know to their monetization director monetization director uh continue to whine and cry on social media continue to target gamers uh continue to blame them on all of your problems it's a losing cause it works every well for people time. right now right continue to do it though because you prove people like it's me right strategy. even though i've already been proven right more times than i can count that now we're at a point where even people that have tried to question me and and uh people like me for years even now they're waking up to the reality of like damn the entertainment industry is fucked and it is. It, and is. it has been for a long time. Yep. Because they continue. We've been seeing it and calling it out. And every time we do, we get pushback saying, oh, we're racist. We're bigots. We don't like women. You just don't like good stories. We saw it coming. We tried to warn you guys. You didn't course correct. Now you're starting to crash. What do you want us to do other than we told you so? And you to hire left wing <laughs> activists that do not care about any of this stuff. They only want to ruin it. So watching them destroy franchise after franchise and then ultimately company after company is par for the course. You guys let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you very much for checking out this video and we will talk to you later.
that's the video guys go check out his channel he's he's a big content creator he does well for himself uh, i'll put the video down in the description but yeah i mean that's been the par for the course recently with uh, any any company that puts anything out there whether it be movies tv shows video games they will sit here and constantly blame the fans for their failure they're the one that put it out there we're not obligated to buy it we're not just gonna shut up and consume next product as much as that's what they want us to be people who just shut up and consume next product we're not going to be so anyway that's all i got for you today guys let me know what you think down in the comments is he right are we right or we're wrong if we're wrong let us know where we're wrong and um if you like the video hit the thumbs up subscribe to the channel for more content and i'll talk to you guys next time have a good one